Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, Minister Denise. God bless you. Elder Nicole, God bless you. God bless you, Tricia. Good evening. You guys forgive me. I was having some problems connecting tonight. Thank you all for sharing the video. Sister with a testimony. God bless you. Good evening, Angela. Good evening, Melinda. Richard, God bless you, my brother. Marcy, God bless you. God bless you all. Amen. Why don't you guys take this time to share the video on your page so that others will know that we're on. And then that way we can move pretty quickly ahead. God bless you. Amanda Siobhan, God bless you. Melinda, God bless you. Amen. We're going to begin shortly. And y'all forgive my lateness. I was having a problem with logging on tonight. Uh, Lates, God bless you. Hey, Amanda, how are you doing? Amen. God bless you, Marcy. God bless you, Gloria. Princess T, God bless you. Amen. Regina, God bless you. Good evening, Lotus. Amen. Yes, we're going to wait about one more minute and then we'll begin in prayer. God bless you, Winifer. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you, Edna. Good evening. Good evening, Winifer. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, Mickey, God bless you. It's good to see you. Amen. Good evening, Regina. Amen. And so we're going to begin tonight's study. Um, let's, let's start off in prayer. God bless you, Bernadette. Um, we're asking God for wisdom and knowledge. And y'all keep me in prayer. I was having some problems with connecting tonight. And, um, you know, um, it, it seems like Facebook is doing something a little different. Um, and so I guess, you know, they <laughs> don't like, or maybe the spirit behind it doesn't like what we're doing. And so it's a good thing. Um, and so Eric, you know, I need you, Eric, to figure out a way. Um, God bless you, Tanisha. But Eric, I need you to figure out a way how we can have good integrity in the video and how we can get these videos out to people. And so, Eric, I need your help, man. I need your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. And so we're having problems. It looks like Facebook has changed a few things. And so I was having some problems with connecting tonight. So God bless you all that are coming. So, Eric, you know what you need to do, man. You, you got the skill. You got the knowledge and the education and the understanding to fix this. And so I need your help, brother. All right? And so let's begin tonight's uh, study in prayer. God bless you, Sister Jacqueline. Lamont, it's good to see you, my brother. God bless you. You're doing great things, Lamont. And so keep doing what you're doing with the men and with the study that you're doing. Um, you guys are doing a, a brilliant job. And so God bless you, my brother. Amen. And so let's begin tonight's study in prayer. Good evening, Sheree. It's good to see you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this time of sharing. God, we thank you for this time of study of your holy word. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would give us holy wisdom, that Father, you remove from us any doubt, any um, false truths, Lord God, and that Father, your Holy Spirit might lead us and guide us into all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, your word is truth. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And so we thank you tonight for your word, for your word is inerrant. It is infallible. Your word is perfect. It is just and so we thank you, God, and we pray, Lord, Lord, for free flow, Lord God, and free understanding that, God, you would speak to our hearts and that, Father, you would give us information and knowledge that might help us, both those who are married, those who are single, unmarried, and those who, Lord God, may not even want to get married. I pray, God, that you would open up our understanding to the truth of your word. We thank you right now in Jesus' name, and we glorify you. Amen. Amen. So God bless you all tonight, and thank you for joining with me tonight. And tonight's topic is he who finds a wife. And we know the scripture, and we can turn there really quickly. He who finds a wife, and that's in Proverbs uh, chapter 18. And um, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me. It's imperative for us to read the word together. So in uh, Proverbs chapter 18 and, and verse uh, 22, uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22 said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing 
and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay, and so we know recently and, and more particularly in, in the last, wow, um, I would think the last maybe five or six years um, of my life, um, I've been inundated with a lot of questions and a lot of comments and a lot of um, uh, requests for teaching on relationships and family, more so than ever in my life. Now, throughout my life, the Lord has used me on so many different areas. And 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 honestly, you know, just to be very forthright with you all and, and putting it all on the table, you know, um, for many years, I didn't want to say anything because I saw so many things in my life that I said, God, you know, I know I'm not happy with and God, I know you're not pleased with. And, and, and so, you know, for many years, I was like, well, how can I talk to other people when, when I myself am failing in this or failing in that? And, and, um, you know, and, and thank you, Sonia. I appreciate that. Um, and, and there's so many things that I found myself, you know, having difficulty with. And until one day the Lord spoke to my heart and said, um, why are you so worried about teaching? what I've told you. I said, well, Lord, you know, I don't really feel like I got this stuff all together. And, and, and I felt like saying, Lord, you know, um, I should have my stuff together first. And God says, that would be good if you were teaching you. But if you're teaching what I said, then um, affirm, if you failed in that area, affirm your failure. And because and, we don't preach ourselves. That's what Paul said. He says, when I came to you, I didn't come to preach philosophy or psychology or any sort of mindset that, oh, I got this together and y'all need to know what I know and, and y'all need to get what I got and I've learned this and I got this all together. No, 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 no. What we preach is the good news of Jesus, who is the Christ. We preach what Jesus has come to teach us and even God himself says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And so when it, when it, when God spoke to my heart about that, it, it changed my, my paradigm. It changed my mindset to say, you know what? We need to be, here's something that's unique. Y'all ready? Here's something that's really unique, right? Um, we need to be honest, right? And I'm talking about those of us who are preachers, teachers, pastors, we need to be honest because the world see, and many of us have seen the preachers and, and teachers preaching the gospel, you know, preaching it with so much power and so much authority. And then all of a sudden you hear he failed or he went through divorce or he went through separation. And so what happened? You know, oftentimes we, it seems like some of us is trying to preach the word as if we are the authority on the word, but we're not. God is the authority. We preach what thus says the Lord what God says unto us. And if we have failed in that, we must be honest and tell people, guess what? I messed up. And God's word is sent to all of us so that we might step up to a higher plane. And so that's my disclaimer. Before we begin, I am not preaching Rodney. I'm preaching Jesus. Y'all hear me. I'm not preaching Rodney. I'm preaching Jesus. I'm not preaching 4-1 Vision Church. I'm preaching Jesus. I'm not preaching um, uh, some dream that I had. No, I'm preaching what thus says the Lord. I'm not preaching for you to trust in what God whispered in my ear. No, I'm preaching what you can see in your Bible for yourself. Okay, so let's let's start off there. Right. The word of God says he in, in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22, it says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. First thing, for those of you who are interested in married and more particularly for those women, you women that are interested in getting married. Number one. Right. It says he who finds a wife. It did not say he who finds a woman. It says, he who finds a wife. Number one, if you feel you want to get married, if you feel that, um, and even for those of you, <laughs> for those of you who are already married and there are challenges, hey, God bless you from Pakistan. God bless you, Cecil. 
uh, Cecil, God bless you. Amen. And, and tonight we got a, uh, um, uh, um, a text, if you will, and someone is watching all the way from South Africa. And so God bless you all, those of you who are watching from different places around the world. We thank God for you. And so think about this. The word of God says, he who finds a wife, a wife, not a woman, a wife, he who finds a wife. It is important to know that those of you who are married, you women who are married, if you're having difficulties in your marriage from your perspective, like you're, um, there's a difficulty that you're having in fitting in and, and getting to understand the things of marriage, sometimes the biggest problem may be that you may be a woman, but you may not be a wife. Now, Hear me. Take your time. Let's take our time with this and, and y'all be patient with me to understand what the word of God is teaching us tonight. Um, the word of God says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Remember, in the book of Genesis, if we turn to Genesis chapter two, Genesis chapter two and beginning at verse 18, and we could read down from 18 to 25, but we're going to start off with verse 18. Okay, and so we're on Genesis chapter two, verse 18. It says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. He says, I will make him a helper comparable to him. Verse 19, and we'll read down to verse 25. It says, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to the beasts of the field. But for Adam, listen to this carefully, for Adam, right, there was not found a helper comparable to him right? N number uh, 21, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. And then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made, look what it says, he made into a woman and here's the key. He brought her to the man. Okay. Listen, he brought her to the man, right? And Adam said, this is now, right? Mind you, he didn't say that when he, uh, like if Adam just saw her. No, he said that after God brought her to him. When God brought her to him, he says, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Therefore, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife, not to his woman, to his wife, and they shall become one flesh and they were both naked. Listen to this, the man and his wife and were not ashamed. Now, here's the key. The reason why some women sometimes have difficulty with what the word of God says, and I got to say this first before we go on, the reason why some women have difficulty to what the word says to the wife as it relates to her husband is because many um, people who are married, many females who are married are merely women and not wives. It's important. It is important to understand this. Now, mind you, tomorrow, I think if we can get through this tonight, tomorrow we're going to touch on the husband. So y'all just be patient. Don't make it seem like Pastor Rodney is just jumping on women. But tonight I want to focus on the woman, right? It is important to know because marriage was not introduced until God made a woman and then brought her to the man. Now, transitionally, this is important. This is important because of the fact of that of each woman that is born, she is born a young uh, a girl, a little girl, and then she matures into a woman. It is after she becomes a woman that she must position herself in such a way that God will bring her to the man that is comparable to him. Now, this is why it's key. Women, let me help you. You cannot choose your husband. Let me help you. You cannot choose your husband because the only one that knows 
who you are comparable to, right? Um, the only one that knows is God. And God never told Eve. Because God has to put something in you that is necessary for the man that he has called and has found, and, and the man that has found favor in God's sight. The man that has found favor in God's sight, you are comparable to. Now, because you don't know that man beforehand, you don't know what it is you need. You don't know what it is you need to become. You don't know what it is um, you need to add to your life. This is why before you get married, your entire life should be to raise the bar of the woman that you are to be. But only God can bring you to the man. Only God can bring you to the man. Only God can present you to the one that you are comparable to. The one that you are comparable to. You, you have to understand, you can't choose him. Now, most women will choose a man based upon if there's something that she desires for her own life. Like, for example, if she desires a good financial backing, you know, because we were taught that a man should take care of his family. So she, she will look for a man with a good financial portfolio. Even some churches will tell the woman, you know, listen, you need to look at his credit report. You need to look at maybe his bank statement. You need to look at his longevity at work. You need to look at all these things that are earthly. Now, listen, I'm not saying these things are not important, but what I am telling you is this, right? If you only base your things upon those things, and based upon the fact that this guy is in church, based upon the fact that this guy is maybe a Christian, and if you base yourself on that, then you know what you are now, but you don't know what you or he will become. Because of that, you don't know if you have what it takes to be with him. You don't know if you have what it takes to deal with the nuances of who he is to become. You don't know if you have what it takes to deal with the issues that he has. This is why you can't choose a husband. This is why you can't choose and look at a guy and say, oh, he would be good husband material. You don't know that because you don't know what he is to become. Look at your own life. How many of you, when you were a teenager or in your 20s or in your 30s or maybe even your 40s, right? You, you thought you liked something, but later on you realized that was a waste of time. So as you mature, your likes and your dislikes changes. Equally so, as he matures, he will change. And you may be suited for him as a boyfriend and girlfriend right now, but you don't know what he is to become because what he is to become has been created by God. What he has become has been created by God to do a purpose that God in his mind has created. Remember, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So the route that he has to take, you may not be capable to go the long haul with him. Oh, you may can get through a wedding day. You may can get through a honeymoon experience. You may can get through um, carrying his baby. But at the end of it all, how many Godly women have gone through life with their marriage, with their husband, had children, had babies, had grandchildren, and once the, empty, the nest has become empty, now all of a sudden, they're looking at this person and saying, why did I marry him? There's some of you that you didn't listen to the advice of God. You didn't listen to the advice of your instructors, your counselors, when it came to you getting married because you just wanted to go at the time that you said it was ready for you to get married. You got married and now you're dealing with a different man than what you married. You're dealing with a man that has made changes. Some for some men and some good changes. 
For some men, it's some bad changes. And you're dealing with these changes, and now you're pulling your hair out saying, I don't know what to do. You should have waited. Number one, you should have waited. Number two, there is hope for you if you're married. If you're married, there is beautiful hope for you to help you through this process, right? Then we're going to get there. So um, I want to share with you these things that understand, number one, women, you cannot choose your husband. God, much your only choice is to become the best woman that you can be, to the best godly woman that you can be. Now, you cannot trick God. Y'all hear me? You cannot trick God. You cannot deceive God because God looks at your heart. He looks at your motives. He looks at everything you do. And some women will put on their best face when it comes to getting a man, but then you rip off that thing once you have the man and he see the real you. Okay? Understand this. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. So number one, women, you have to become in God's eyes a good thing. I'm talking about in God's eyes, not your mama's eyes, not your daddy's eyes, not your pastor's eyes, not your friend's eyes, not even your eyes. You got to become a good thing in the eyes of of God. Now, before you get a, a, um, sort of upset and say, well, pastor, don't call me no thing. No, no, no. Listen, when you say thing, thing means it could mean anything. And remember that a woman was made to be a helper for her husband. So she was made to be anything. She was made to, that's why women, you have this unique gift to transform yourselves and, and to become whatever you need. If you need to carry, and I'm not talking about in marriage, but let's say if you need to carry two jobs, go to school and take care of kids, you can do it. Why? Because of the fact that God has made you so complex, so wise, so incredible until a woman can become anything that she needs to become. Okay. But when it comes to a husband, right? It is important to know that you must be a good thing to be used by God for the man who has found favor with God. Now, number two, it is important to know that when it comes to the, the husband, the husband will find you when he finds favor with God. Now, for those of you who are not upping the level, and I'm talking about ladies, for those of you ladies who are not upping the level of the type of woman that you are, that you're not pursuing excellence in you being a better woman than you were before, better woman than when you, God bless you, Carmen, that you'll be a better woman than what you were before. If for those of you who have been divorced or those of you who are separated, you must stop looking at what your husband have done or your ex-husband has done. Stop looking at what your boyfriend has done. Stop looking at what your baby's father has done. Done. Stop looking at all that and look at you. Look at you and see what kind of woman were you then? Are you improving that woman now? I'm not just talking about looking more sexy. I'm not just talking about looking more sensual. I'm not talking about getting your body together, your makeup together, your money together. No, I'm talking about the grace of who you are, the way you talk. Today, I went out and I was washing clothes. And when I was washing clothes, I was in the laundromat and there was this mother there with her, I don't know if it was her boyfriend, her husband, but they had uh, probably about two or three children, three children, um, and all the children except one, uh, two of the children was underneath the age of 10, right? One child looked like was maybe like three or four and the other child looked like she was maybe about five or six. And then there was a boy that looked like he was maybe about 13, right? And when they were in the laundromat, this woman, she was cussing like a sailor. She was cussing when she was telling the kids and giving the kids instruction. She was telling her, bring your MF, that, 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 that. Get your AS, that, 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 that. She was just cursing this kid out, right? And then eventually, as I was sitting there drying the clothes and I was sitting there going, God, look at this. This is ridiculous. She was cursing out the kids. She was cursing out the men. 
right? Finally, the three-year-old, the three, four-year-old, whatever the age that child was, the three, four-year-olds said, get the F out of my face. And she, and, and the, the, the teenager started laughing at it. And she said, watch your mouth, boy. And I'm sitting there going, how can the child watch his mouth when you ain't? How can the child watch what they say if you're not? And listen, I want to tell you, many of you women that have children, you have children and you dog out your husband or your boyfriend or your baby's daddy um, in front of the kids. You may be on the phone talking to your girlfriend and you think that kid is sitting at the table coloring or you think that kid is in the room playing, but that kid hears what you're saying and that kid dishonors his father. It is important to know that people of God, you must realize, and I'm talking about those of you who are single parents, you must take your frustration, not on the kids, not to anyone else, but you must take your frustration to God because you must allow God to help you to be a better woman than where you've been. He's got to help you to be a better woman than where you are. Because let me tell you something. If you don't up the ante of the type of woman you are, if you don't learn how to control your tongue and how you talk to your husband, how you talk to your um, children, how you talk to family and friends, if you don't learn how to control that, then guess what? You are not qualified to have a man that has God's favor. You're not. Because all you will do is destroy the man that he is. Now, let me help you. For those of you who have not upped the ante of the woman that you are, then you get, now hear me correct, correctly, you get the man that's comparable to you. So if you just want to be any kind of woman, then you get the man that's just like you. He's an any kind of man. He's an any kind of man. You got to you gotta up the ante of the woman that you are. And I'm talking about you got to be pleasing in the sight of your heavenly father. Because he is, before you get married, he is your husband. And how you behave from the heart and from the spirit and from the mind and from the attitude, how you behave inside is what measures what is reflected on the outside. And I've seen so many women that they are beautiful physically, physically beautiful, physically appealing and drawing. But when you talk to them, they're loud and I'm going to talk to you about this for a second. They're loud. They are angry. They're frustrated. They got all kinds of um, anxiety inside. And it is so easy to rile them up. It's so easy to piss them off. It's so easy to disrupt their day. You cannot have a man that finds favor with God because that man who finds favor with God is devoted to God first and you will cause him to break some of his devotion because now he's got to run behind you and clean up your messes. It is important. It is important, ladies. It is so important. I can't tell you. I can't understress this. I can't overstress this. It is so important for you the up the ante of the woman that you are. Now, mind you, that goes for single women, and that goes for divorced women, and that goes for separated women, and that goes for married women. You must up the ante of the, the woman that you are. You say that if you have a husband, that this husband is all messed up. This husband is not doing the right thing. Then let me ask you, what kind of woman are you? What kind of woman are you? Because think about this. And this, this might hurt right now, but you know, take this from a heart of love. Um, if you say that my husband is not doing nothing and my husband is, is messing up and my husband, now mind you, you chose that man, right? So if you say my husband is messing up, my husband is this, then guess what? The Bible says that I'm going to make him a woman that's a helper for him. So the boo-boo that you got is the boo-boo that you need to help. 
And, and this is why if you don't up the ante of the type of woman that you are, and that when, when God brings you to a husband, he makes you into a wife. And there's a lot of married women that have yet to become a wife. So everything that I will share with you tonight and, and whatever days we're working on this, um, anything that I will share to you, you will not be able to practically do it on a regular basis because of the fact of that you have not become a wife yet. Your mind is not a wife's mind, but your mind is still a woman's mind. It's a woman's mind, and check this out, it was a woman that messed up everything in the garden. Because oftentimes I share with, with women, when I share with them, is think about this. When God um, spoke to Adam, the first question he said to Adam is, Adam, where are you? The second question he said to Adam is, who told you you were naked? But the first question, the first question that he asked the wife, he says, what is this that you have done? He says, and God bless you, Hillis. Um, you could take this video when we're done and you could share it with them. You could share it with them. Okay. Um, and, and also let you guys know, I'm willing to travel and, and come out there and share with them personally. And so make that happen. And we can go and do it, right? But but here's the thing. You must understand that um, the wife is designed by God to help her husband. A woman is designed to be pleasurable to the Lord, to please the Lord. But a wife is designed by God to help her husband. Um, so a woman is not capable of being the wife that she needs to be until her mind is transformed. Um, that's why even the husband, a man, when he becomes a husband, he must be transformed in his thinking and he must break free from his mother and his father. He must break free from the safety of mother and father. Why? Because mother and father represents his safety. It represents his comfort. It represents the things that have provided for him. When he separates from mother and father, he now takes the role and the mindset of that I now must take responsibility for someone else. Right? And there's a lot of men who are married who are not yet husbands. And that's why they kick fuss and complain about their responsibilities because they have not grown up enough. They have not matured enough to become a husband with the mindset that I must take care of my family. Okay. And it's more than just money. It's more than just um, uh, being there. It's more than just teaching your son how to pee and teaching your daughter how to date um, men and how to choose a good man. But it's about, it's about being that living example for your sons and your daughters to follow. It's about living a life that demonstrates what a godly man is, what a godly man of God, what a, and showing your sons what a husband is, not just what a man is, because they can find that from anybody, but showing them what a husband is, um, showing your sons how to love my wife, how to treat my wife well, how to speak to my wife, how to um, protect my wife, how to watch over my children, how how to um, cuddle my children, how to um, bathe my children, take care of my children. So um, uh, if a man does not become a husband in his mind, then he cannot um, properly be married to a woman. And if a woman um, does not become a wife in her mind and in her spirit, then she cannot be what is necessary for her husband. Why do I say this? Because as I shared with you earlier, it is important to know that sometimes, right, God may cause for that man, that man, that godly man who, you know, this man, he's a good man and God may take him through a test. God may take him through something that requires for him to stand upright and to do something that no one has done. It is his wife's responsibility to bless him. Now, I'm going to share this with you, ladies. It is important to know. 
Anytime God takes your husband through an experience that he wants your husband to be tested in something, right? What he will do is that whatever he takes away from your husband, he will double down on you. My God, I wish y'all could see this from the Holy Word of God, and we're going to share it with you. He'll double down on you. So that means if God desires for your husband, right, to, um, to let's say, for example, for your husband to not work at the same time or right before he tells your husband to, to, um, uh, uh, to commit himself to full-time ministry, what God will do is that he will double down the wife's salary. He will double down the wife's position. Why? Because she is a helper suitable for her husband. And this is why, ladies, when it comes to, this is why when it comes to choosing a man, you can't choose a man. Because you don't know what road God is going to take him through. You don't know what challenges God is going to place in his life. And if you're still just a woman in your mind and not a wife, what you'll do is that you'll feel comfortable with where he was. But then you won't know what to do with where he will be. Because there's a problem that we men have. And let me share this with you. There's a problem that we have. And we men have a problem that we don't know really how to say, I need help. We don't know how to do that. Most men don't know how to do that. And so when we're going through stuff that is chaotic for us, what do we normally do? We shut down and we get quiet. And when we get quiet, that drives you women crazy because you see the pain. You see the stuff we're going through and then you don't know what to do because we're not talking to you. Because we're not sharing to you. We're not sharing it with you. We're not exposing our own weaknesses. Why? Because we're still a man and not a husband. Because if we're a husband, we know that our responsibility is to take care of our families. So if God tells me to do something that, that goes against what I believe is taking care of my family, then I will discuss that with my wife. I'll let go of my pride. My wife will let go of her ego or her comforts. And we will then do what is necessary to still keep this thing moving. And there's a lot of people, and I'm talking about believers. We're not talking about unbelievers. That's a whole nother ball of wax. I'm talking about believers. Believers that do not know their proper place in God. And so therefore, you don't realize that God has made ways for you. God has already made ways for you. God has already blessed you. This is why for some of you women that God has blessed you before you got married. And when, when God blesses you before you get married um, and he blesses you financially, he blesses you educationally, he blesses you with great credit, he blesses you with all this. Listen, you need to start thinking because guess what? Guess what? God may give you a husband that got good credit and good money or God may give you a husband that needs your credit and needs your money. See, we, we don't think like God thinks. We don't understand as God understands. A woman, a woman is to be a helper for her husband. Now, let's go a little further, right? I want you to look in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. When you get to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I want you to look at verses 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It says, Nor was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Now, number one, a woman, a regular woman, cannot receive this. Cannot receive this. Why? Because it makes it seem like that it's all about the man. And it's not. Like I told you, if you guys be patient and you stick with me throughout this teaching, and, and if we can get to, through this part today, then on tomorrow we'll deal with the husbands, right? But tonight we're talking about the women. A wife must realize that the man was not made for her. So a lot of times when women come to me and they say, well, pastor, you know, I think this guy would be good for my life. Because of the fact they're looking for a man that's going to be comparable for them. But that's not why God created you, ladies. I know it may bust your bubble. I know it may hurt. 
But God didn't create you so that somebody might be good for you. No, God created you and he placed in you the tools that you need to be good for him. This is why, ladies, one of the things that God teaches you, he teaches you about submission. He teaches you about humility. He teaches you about controlling your tongue. He teaches you about having grace and by putting more beauty in your heart and in your words than you do on your face and in your hair and in your nails and your toes and your, your bracelets around your ankle and toe rings and finger rings and bracelets and necklaces. No, 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 no. Because there's a lot of women that you're looking for a man, but you don't know how to talk. You don't know how to carry on a conversation. You don't know how to deal with your anger. You don't know when you're angry and when you're frustrated how to deal with things. You, you look at your husbands. You look at them with such disdain. When, you, when they meet your disapproval, when, when, when they don't do what you want them to do, you shut down and the whole house is, is on needles and pins because mama is crazy. The whole house is, is disrupted because guess what? It is not the man that changed the temperament of the house. It is the woman. That's why the God says that the woman is to be a manager at home. She's to be the one who manages the home. So when the woman is out of, out of whack, when she's out of sorts, when the woman is, is disrupted, the whole house is disrupted. Because even if you have a knuckleheaded man, that woman is able to still bring peace into the house. She's able to still bring calmness into the house. But when the woman is crazy, the Bible says a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. So it's important to know that women, and I, and I pray that you receive the love of God in this teaching tonight, because sometimes it's hard. And, you know, I know that even in the church and when I go traveling, if I talk about, oh, women, you are blessed and highly favored. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Women will shout and go ahead, pastor, preach that thing. But then when you talk about the responsibilities and the accountabilities of women, the church gets so quiet because oftentimes we all, men and women, none of us really want to hear correction. Right. But understand that the word of God says that if the Lord corrects you is because he loves you. OK, so tonight we want to talk about the women and we'll talk and share with you, ladies, that it is important for you to raise the bar of the woman that you are to learn how to speak, to learn how to deal with anxiety, to learn how to deal with nervous energy. Because you as a woman, when you have nervous energy, you transfer that, listen, not only to your children that are in your womb, but to your whole household. When mommy is not happy, the whole house is not happy. When mommy is angry, oh, santo, ay Dios mío. When mommy is not happy, whoo, Jesus. Glory a Dios. It is important to know that when mommy is not happy, everybody's on pins and needles. And that big, strong man that you know, that big, powerful, strong man that you know, he's scared. Hell has no fury like a woman scorned. The fact is, remember in the word of God, Elijah, Elijah called down fire from heaven, called down fire from heaven and, and, and mocked 500 prophets of Baal, mocked them, mocked their God, mocked everything. One woman, Jezebel, said, sent a message to him and said, may God do more to me if by this time tomorrow you're not dead. And the Bible says this strong man ran and hid from Jezebel. He was afraid. He was scared. Samson was the strongest man in all the world, taken down by a woman. Read throughout the word of God. You'll find that God has so many times, in so many cases, have used women and so many women, some good and some bad, have destroyed men after men. Look in the canons of history. 
How many presidents have fallen at the hand of a woman? How many, and I'm not talking about they weren't guilty, because they were guilty as well. But how many presidents have fallen at the hand of women? How many scandals has come out from because of a woman? How many marriages have been broken up because of infidelity with a woman? How many things have gone on because of woman? And like I said, I'll share this with you again. The first question that God said to Eve is, what is this that you have done? You may not want to receive it, ladies. You may get upset with it. Please do not get upset with it. But know this, that when a woman does the right thing, when a woman pursues the right thing, then everything in her household is in order. You say, well, pastor, my husband, he has something to do with this too. Yes, he does. And we're going to learn about that tomorrow. But guess what? Even Abigail, Abigail was married to a man who was named Fool. He was named a fool, Nabal, because everything he did was foolish. But yet and still, because he was married to this wise woman named Abigail, he was wealthy, his home was in order, his servants was in order, there was order in his household, and he was able to keep, although, my God, although he was a foolish man, he was able to keep his wealth because of that woman. So don't tell me you can't do it because if God is in you, ladies, my God, you can transform anything. That's why Adam called his wife Eve. He said, because she shall be the mother of all living. She's the mother of all living. She's the mother that can do something that no other man or no other creature on this earth could ever do. She has great power. That's why when the virtuous woman talks about that perfect woman, if you look at what she did and the resume of what she did, this woman was unstoppable. But take that same power, ladies, before you get an ego trip, take that same power and bottle it up in this. All that power was made for your husband. Check that out. All the power, all the all the uh all the, the the greatness that God has called you to be, all the phenomenal woman that God has called you to be, all the incredible woman that God has called you to be is to be bottled up and given to the husband that God has given you. Now, I must share this because many of us pastors have done a disservice to your household. Why? Because many of us pastors have allowed for you to serve us when we know that you're not serving your husband. And I made, I made a commitment in my life that I would never allow a woman to usurp the authority of her husband. I don't care how much I need her. I don't care how much I could use her help. I don't care how much I could use her help. If she's not helping her husband, I don't want her helping me. And then secondly, we've had women in our church that have come from other churches and said, Pastor, I want to be a member of your church. And if she's married, I would say, then I need to talk to your husband and get his permission. Why? Because I will not, God never gave me, and I'm saying this to all you pastors out there and all you preachers and teachers, God never gave me the authority over your household that your husband is there. He gave me the authority um, under his authority in the church. But I am not to usurp the authority of your husband. Why? Because the word of God says that even if you have an unbelieving spouse, it says that you are to discipline the way you talk. So that when you go before your husband, maybe your husband can be win one for Christ. So you got to watch what you say about him. You can't, uh, no woman, no real good wife will talk to her friends badly about her husband. No good woman will do that. 
No good wife will do that. No good wife will dog out her husband to her friends. No good wife will expose her husband's weaknesses to her friends. Because you realize that you are sent by God. You are sent by God to help him. Not to destroy him. Not to mock him. Not to belittle him. Not to make him feel small. Or to make your friends know things about him that he doesn't know. To expose his flaws. What kind of woman? Listen. Listen. I know that there are women who seek counsel. And if you're seeking counsel, make sure you're seeking counsel from a godly person. And if that person doesn't honor your husband, then that person is not the one you need to seek counsel for. You need to repent. If that person is telling you, oh girl, you could do better than him. You need to repent. Because it is not designed. You are not designed by God to, to point out his flaws. You are not designed by God to expose his weaknesses. You are not designed by God to ruin him in the eyes of others. In fact, if you are living, and forgive me for saying these words, but if you are living with a bum, everybody else should know from you that he is a king. So if you are belittling him, then you need to repent to your heavenly father because you're not doing what God has commanded you to do. And that is to be a helper for him. Now, when you are a helper for your husband, right, it may cause you to give up some freedoms and liberties that you could have. Like, for example, this is why women, you can't choose your husband. Because some of you, when you get that credit and you get that good credit, you get that good portfolio, you're used to that lifestyle, lifestyle, you're used to your girlfriend weekends away, you're used to getting your toes done, your hair done, you're used to all those things, and then you're forced to marry this man. And when you're forced to marry this man and you get married to this man or you force this man to marry you, you, you force him to marry you, then what happens is that when now he needs you, and then if he needs you a little bit, you're okay. But if he needs you and it start cutting into your stuff, it start cutting into your time, it start cutting into your stuff, then you start to know if you're really a woman or a wife. Because if you're a woman, you're going to kick, fuss, and fight. But if you are a wife, that wife knows that all of me, is designed to help him. So if I have to give 100% of myself, then guess what? I'm honoring my heavenly father because I'm doing what God has called me to do. You have to be a wife. And there's a lot of women that you're looking for a husband, but you have not yet become a wife. You've not yet become that wife in your mindset where you are okay with giving up stuff. Now, for you women out there that have children, you have children, right? If you have a boyfriend that you're interested in marrying and you think that this marriage is going to go into uh, or this relationship is going to go into marriage and your boyfriend is telling you and giving you advice about your son and your daughter and you're fighting with him, you're not a wife. Because a wife recognized that her husband is her head. So that means if you have children and you marry a man, then you have now made that man your head to tell you what you can and cannot do with your children. And there's a lot of women, godly women we're talking to, that you can't submit. If you look at the subtitle of my topic tonight, the topic is he who finds a wife. But the subtopic or the hashtag is can you hear God through him? This is why you can't marry uh, uh, a man that is not saved. You can't marry a man that is not walking faithfully with Christ. Why? Because you don't know if he's talking for himself or if he's talking for God. 
You don't know if when he says, I want you to do this, many women will say no if they think it's coming from him. And they'll say, he doesn't know right. He doesn't know what's right. But if you marry a man that you know that God has brought you to, then you will humble yourself and submit yourself under his authority, even if you don't like it. And I've seen too many people that when it comes to their children, their children have been the means for breaking up their marriage. Their children have been the means for their husbands going out there cheating. Their children have been the means for their husband to go drinking or smoking or whatever case may be. Because why? Because man, here's something beautiful, ladies. God does not give us the power to control you. You must be willing to follow. That's why men who want to control their women, eventually what they do, they end up yelling, screaming, or banging the wall, or, or even abusing their wives. They try to do that because it's, 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 we don't have it within us to control you. So when a woman keeps doing stuff that we feel we can't control, there's one or two courses. Number one, in the bad way, in the sinful way, there is abuses, verbal abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, right? Infidelity. All these things happen in the bad way. But in, in another way that's not as bad that many of y'all don't see is when your husband gets quiet. Because if you look in Genesis, when Adam, when Eve was being tempted by Satan, and Satan was talking to her. The scripture says that she took of the fruit and she ate of the fruit and she gave to her husband that was with her. In other words, Adam was standing right there. So anytime the woman steps out of the authority of her husband, anytime the woman steps out from, from submission to her husband, it causes her husband to be quiet. And what he'll do, he'll back down and back off. And if you let him stay there long enough, he'll, he'll let go and abdicate his responsibility as spiritual head and leader of his family. And he'll let you do whatever you want to do. He'll let you say whatever you want to say. He'll let you accomplish whatever you want to accomplish, right? He'll let you um, have things the way you want it to be done. He'll let you do whatever you want to do. Why? Because no longer does he want the responsibility. Because you're going to do whatever you want to do anyway. And so when a man gets quiet, a lot of women think that's good. They think that's good because he's not fussing. He's not complaining. He's not, he's not all of a sudden that, but deep down inside, let me tell you something, and I'm going to help you out today. And some of you may get upset with this statement, but when a man stays quiet <clears throat> and he comes in the house or he's in the relationship and he's just going along with the flow, I can tell you without a shot of a doubt, he's devoted to something. He's devoted to something. And in some cases, he's devoted to someone. And a lot of women don't know that. Because when a, when a woman becomes the wife that God has designed her to be, what happens is that that husband sees her as indispensable. He sees her as being, I can't live my life without her. Because it is her that allows me to be all that I am. When a husband does not take the role of what God has called him to be, then he has to carry weights that God is not giving him power to carry. Which means, ladies, he'll do the things he has to do, but in the midst of it all, he'll get tired. He'll get tired and you'll always see him sleeping. You'll always see him resting. You'll always see him just looking for quiet space. So he'll let you do whatever you want to do. And some of you women feel like that's utopia. Because he's let me do whatever I want to do. But I'm here to tell you, it is because he's overwhelmed. 
and you're not doing what he needs to do. I know that me as a single man, as a single man, unmarried man, I find myself doing so much stuff. And so when I find myself doing so much stuff, you know, that I got to do it all. Like I told you, today I was washing clothes. I got to cook dinner. I got to clean the house. I got to um, check behind my kids. I got to um, organize stuff. I got to study. I got to prepare. I got to do work. So when most people meet me, they find that in between all the stuff that I do, what do I do? I sleep. I sleep because it is overwhelming. It is taxing on me. So my assistant at the church well, oftentimes, and I have very close, dear friends to me and people who love me, that they will oftentimes say to me, did you eat? Did you sleep? Why don't you go to bed? Don't be up so late. Why are you up so late at night? What's going on? Is everything okay? Right. And they become almost like and y'all take this in a spiritual mind, not in a in an earthly mind, but they almost become like surrogate wives. And, and a lot of women have become like surrogate wives to their pastors, surrogate wives to their pastor to say, let me help my pastor accomplish what he needs to accomplish. And what you realize is this is, ladies, if you're doing that for your pastor, but you're not doing that for your husband, then you are guilty. You're guilty. You're guilty. And so let's continue. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 4, it says, The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Now here's the key. Speaking about women tonight, women, you don't have a right to do, if you're married, to do what you want with your body without your husband's approval. And what do I mean by doing with your, with your body? Your body meaning everything that is of your body. That means cutting your hair, coloring your hair. That means your makeup. That means your clothing. That means your whatever stuff you wear. Because... You represent, the scripture says, the wife is the glory of her husband. You represent him. And so that's why I said that if you're just a woman, a lot of these things will be kind of tight for you because you, it doesn't make sense. Because you're still a woman and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're still a woman, that's good. You're still a woman in development. That's good. That's great. But when you realize that as a wife, you represent your husband, you are the glory of your husband. And so you may want to do something. You may want to change something. You may be tired of a certain uh, hairstyle. You may say, because I know women, a lot of you women say, oh my God, you know, I don't like a lot of hair because it's all hot under my neck. But what if your husband loves hair? If your husband loves hair, then you ought not cut your hair, but you got to take the effort and the work to take care of that hair so that he might have what it is he desires because you're the glory of your husband. Yes, Nicole, it's about submission. And, and when you are a, a woman, when you're just a woman, then you don't understand submission because a woman is growing into her own maturity. So you understand the things that you want. And so what, you, what a lot of people think, they get into marriage and they think marriage is about give and take. No, 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 no. It's not about give and take, right? Marriage is not a 50-50 partnership because if I'm giving you 50 and you're giving me 50, where's that other 50 going? Because there's 100% of us. So if I'm giving you 50, then that means 50% of me is going to somebody or something else. And 50% of you is going to somebody or something else. No, marriage is a commitment. It is a devotion. It is a dedication. That's why the word of God says, wives, you don't have authority over your own body. So if you want to keep authority of your body, then you're not suitable to be a wife yet. Okay, because women in this world, you have to understand what you what you're dealing with. And so we're going to talk about that a little further. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter 5. 
Ephesians chapter 5 and, and verses um, 22 to uh, 24. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 to 24. Okay, um, look at what it says. Wives, submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Stop there for a second before we read on. Wives, those of you who are married, those of you who allowed him to put a ring on it. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Husbands, as you would submit to the Lord. For the husband, verse 23, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he, Christ, is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject or submissive to Christ, so let the wives be subject and submissive to their own husbands in everything. Everything. That's why if you're just a woman, you won't understand this. This doesn't make sense. It's something that seems to be unfair. Yeah, but it is unfair. But no one said it was supposed to be fair. You said you wanted a husband. And we'll learn very soon. We're going to learn too, because I think we need to do a part two of this. But we'll learn very soon about, and probably by Thursday we'll learn, about the husband. And why, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. That ladies, you can point to and say, it's unfair. It's not even. It seems like you're doing more of something. And then there are other things that the husband is doing more of something. But it's important to know that God didn't say that it was supposed to be fair. Nowhere in scripture does it say that marriage is supposed to make you happy. It doesn't say it. Marriage is to fulfill a God-given purpose. And sometimes, ladies, let's say if you married a man that is called of God, you married, what if it's something that will hurt, he may ask to do? Ah, uh, that's a very interesting question. And, um, and I'll share that with you, Rebecca. Um, it's important. Um, and, and let me finish the statement, then I'll come back to that, right? Um, when, when women, if you marry a husband, and let's say that husband is called of God, that husband is called of God, that husband is anointed, that husband is called of God to be used of God, he's called of God to be used of God, what happens is this, the enemy attacks him. The enemy attacks him from all different areas. And so when you marry him, because you are now his wife and you are the helper for him, then the enemy will multiply your attacks. And you must realize that's why you have to develop ladies spiritually. Because if you don't develop yourself spiritually, and grow strong in the Lord, if you can't deal with the stuff you're going through without freaking out, then once you add to your stuff, his stuff, it's going to be even worse. And too many people put the cart before the horse. Too many people put um, uh, marriage before they put development and maturity. Okay? Too many people put, put too much stuff before God. Okay? And so it's it's important for you to know. Amen. Um it's important for you to to 
understand, right, what God has to say. Now, let me answer this question. I want to answer this question, right? And y'all forgive me. I'm looking at something that um, that uh, someone had just texted me um, over to Facebook, and they wanted to do it privately. And so, listen, I want to share this with you. Think about this. A lot of women, and, and just now, Rebecca asked, what if, what if um, the, the man is asking you to do something that will hurt? Okay? Now, let's talk about this for a second. Um, sometimes, and let's talk about this from the natural. Sometimes, men have become, and we're going to talk about this more in detail when we talk about the husband. Because this is very, it's a key component to husbandry. Men sometimes has, um, they have a, a, a development within them of lust. A development in them of worldliness. A development in them of something that is defiled, something that is distorted. And when they become or they get married, and they haven't become a husband, then what they do is that they force their wives to become as worldly-minded and wicked as they are, right? Now, let me, let me just answer this one question. Hold on one second. Amen. Amen. Because apparently this subject is very powerful to people. And a lot of people, um, a lot of people are, are responding um, on so many different levels about this subject. So this subject is very powerful um, for those of you who are watching. And so I thank you for you guys watching. I thank you for all your responses. And I want to answer all responses, but it's difficult for me to answer your responses, every one of them, while I'm teaching, because I need to flow with this, and we'll continue with this tomorrow. Um, but I want to share this with you. It is important to know that when a man has developed himself in a worldly mindset, when a man, you know, you have husbands, and I'm talking about godly men, godly men who are watching soft porn, godly men who are watching hard porn, Godly men who are um, harboring within their hearts very lustful things, very worldly things. Um, godly men who are masturbating. Godly men who are doing all kinds of wickedness within their hearts. So when they get married, now mind you, not all marriages have been brought together by God. Some marriages have been rushed some marriages have been forced by the hands of men and women. They've been forced. Um, you know, sometimes people, like you, you may have heard me say when I was talking um, years ago, a couple of years ago, on the subject of sex, that one of the things I said is that um, most of the times when people misconstrued love for is lust because they get involved with each other physically, romantically, and then because it feels good, it engages the heart, it engages the mind, it engages the soul, and it's so easy to say, I love you. But love, when you look at love, if you want to know whether you love somebody or not, answer me this question, are you fulfilling everything that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says? When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says love is patient. Are you anxious and forcing that person to get married, forcing that person to acknowledge you? Are you making these little innuendos and statements to say, you don't really let nobody know who I am and you don't really... Do no, that's not love. That's you. That's your lust. And I'm talking about male and female, right? Um, if a man is trying to force you to give him some, if he's trying to force you to get in bed with him, that's not love. That's lust. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about love and what love is. Love is patient. Let's turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, because a lot of people, you're trying to get married to somebody who you don't love and who they don't love you. 
And so you better thank God that they haven't married you yet because they don't love you yet. Okay, love is not something that can happen overnight. Love is not something that even can happen sometimes within a year. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it takes a long time for true love to exist. And sometimes love can happen very quickly. But the word of God gives us instruction on what love is. So it tells us love is patient. It suffers long. So if you can't go through anything, if you have no patience, that's not love. That's your lust. For even the Bible says, be not anxious for anything. So for those of you that say, I'm just anxious, I'm just anxious. No, that's not godly. That's of this world, that's of your flesh. It says love does not envy. You don't envy when I see a woman who, if her husband or her boyfriend is talking to somebody else and she necessarily want to jump into the conversation because he's talking to the opposite sex. That's not love. That's your envy. That's your envy that he laughed at something they said, but he didn't laugh at something you said. It says, love does not parade itself. In other words, love is not trying to show itself and to remind them, well, uh, you didn't say hi to me today. You didn't hug me today. You didn't kiss. No, that's not love. That is you. And that's your insecurity. Because oftentimes when I look at people who say this, right? If a woman says, then I'm mad with him. Why are you mad with him? Because he didn't call me all day. Okay. Did you call him? No. So what makes you right and him wrong? Because he should have called me. Okay. So wait on it. Because a simple road to take, if you love somebody, and let's say if you want a kiss from that person, if you want a kiss from that person, instead of fussing about that the person didn't kiss you, why don't you just pucker up and kiss them? Then you get a kiss. Love is, does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself. Verse 5, does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Is not provoked. It thinks no evil. You know, there, there are women that, that come to me and say, Pastor, my man doesn't trust me. Then your man doesn't love you. I don't care what he says. Because love does not think any evil. That's why oftentimes if I, if I see somebody and I'm thinking evil about something they're doing or I don't trust them, listen, and let me help you brothers that are watching tonight, okay? Because I want to give you something. Here's a nugget for you, right? If there's a woman in your life that you don't trust, then she's not ready to be your wife. And I'm going to tell you why. For the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 31, it says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, and she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And I'm, keep your finger on 1 Corinthians 13, because I want you guys to, to mark this in your copious notes. In Proverbs chapter 31, so you don't think that this is just Pastor Rodney quoting something. Proverbs chapter 31 and, and verse 11 and 12, it says, The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. So when it comes to, when it comes to uh, men, if you look at your wife and, or your woman and you don't trust, if you look at your woman, the one that you're dating, the one that you are connected to, that you desire to date or be with, and you don't trust her, I'm here to tell you that there's more work that you need to do and there's more work that she needs to do um, in order to, to, before marriage comes. Too many people get married first because they think that if I marry you, then all the stuff that I'm feeling, all my insecurities are going to go out the window. No. Paul told us by the power of the Holy Spirit, Paul says 
that to be single, to be unmarried is better than to be married. Why? He said, because he says, but even if you get married, you have not sinned. He said, but those who get married will have trouble in the flesh. So when you get married, you double your trouble. Why? Because when you're single, when you're unmarried, you only have one flesh person to worry about. When you get married, you have two flesh people to worry about. So it doubles your trouble. So we go back to 1 Corinthians 13. It says, love does not rejoice, verse 6, in iniquity, in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Look at verse 7. Love bears all things. When the word says all, any, any word, any statement that says all, it means everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never fails. So for those of you who said that you fell out of love, no, you never loved in the first place. I'm here to tell you, you don't fall out of love. Once you love somebody, you will always love that person. And I'm not just talking about your first I'm not talking about your first love. I'm not talking about your the, the one that you first slept with. I'm talking about anybody that you truly love, even if you decide that this relationship should not go further, guess what? You will always have love in your heart for them and love will not do any evil. Love does not disown. Love does not um, shame. Love does not embarrass. Love covers, it protects. Okay? So let's wrap this up, right? Um, we, we talked about tonight that God doesn't make a woman for a man. Um, he doesn't make, I'm sorry, he, he makes the woman for the man and he doesn't make the man for the woman. We talked about that God doesn't make a woman for a man, but he makes a wife for a man. Um, he, he, he brings her because the word of God says in Genesis chapter two, it says that God formed the woman and then presented her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She's my wife because God has got to present that woman that has been formed. And so ladies, um, for tonight. Um, for tonight's uh, uh, conclusion, we, we'll go further. We will go further in this teaching tomorrow. But for tonight's teaching, I want to leave with you these few things. Number one, I want to leave with you that you cannot find a husband. He must, God will present you to him. He's going to find you. Number two, in the meanwhile, you have to develop the woman that you are. Whatever woman you are, now this is for married, single, divorced, separated. You have to develop the woman that you are. Become the greatest woman that you can become through the power of the Holy Spirit. So number number one, you can't find a husband. And I, and I hope one of you guys would just write this on the feed. So number one, you don't seek for a husband. He seeks for you. God brings you to him. Number two, you have to develop, in the meanwhile, you have to develop yourself to the best woman that you can be. Number three, that best woman is found on the level, oh, God bless you, Hillis. No, uh, I'm not on every night. I'm on uh, Monday nights, and Thursday nights at 8.30 p.m. And then on Tuesday nights, I'm on at 9 p.m. Okay? For the summer nights, we're going to change our schedule a little bit. But for now, I'm on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. So number one, you don't seek a husband. He seeks for you. Thank you, Princess T. Number two, in the meanwhile, you must, you must uh, increase the level of woman you are which means increasing your maturity, the way you talk, your grace, your innermost being, everything about you in the inside. Stop spending so much time on the outside 
and spend more time on the inside. When you're mad, why do you lock in to that anger? For those of you who have children, your children get you upset and you're screaming at the kids in the midst of the man that you desire to marry. And you're not paying attention that he sees that as chaos. So you got to develop the grace inside, the grace, the peace inside, right? Number three, you have to measure up and be seen by God. Measure up and be seen by God. That means you must be pleasing in your heavenly father's sight. These are things that you have to do. Be pleasing in your father's sight. Okay? Number four. Make sure you guys got that. Okay? So number three, you must be pleasing in your father's sight. Number four, when you are ready to be married, what you're going to find that happens is that God is going to transform the way you think from being a woman, thinking as an individual, to thinking as a wife. And that's something that only God can do. And that means you'll stop thinking as an individual and you'll start thinking as a wife. Um, that's something that only God can do through you. You can't do. Because the battle that wives deal with at all times is submission. Submission. Submission to your husband. And because of that, when you, when you start thinking as a wife, you're going to start looking more broadly. And then you got to be, here's the component of thinking as a wife. You got to be willing to let go of your comforts. Let go of the stuff that you want. Because it's no longer about what you want. When you become a wife, it's about what God wants in the life of your husband. And you rep recognize that you are the glory of the man. And so what you have done has positioned yourself from a woman that is looking to be the best that she could be. And that now you submit. And that's God's rule in everything. When we talk about the men, you're going to see how this makes sense. Because of the fact of that, when you go up, the higher you go in God, the lower you have to become. And so when God takes you from being just a woman to becoming a wife, it is submission that you have to deal with. Submission to your husband. And so that's all we're going to share for tonight. Uh, we may do a part two tomorrow. If we don't do a part two tomorrow, then we're going to start immediately on the men tomorrow. And so God bless you all. Let us pray tonight. If there's anything that I've said that triggered something in you and you have some spe specific questions, please message me outside of this video so that I'll have it and I can look at it later, pray over it and ask God for wisdom on how to respond. And maybe what I might do is do a further teaching on it so that that will cover the basis. Amen. So let us pray tonight. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and those that you know so that they might um, take part of this study as well and also ask questions. So let us pray tonight. Father God, we thank you for this time of sharing. And God, we thank you for your holy word, for your word is truth. And God, your word is perfect. And so God, I thank you for every person that partook tonight and every person that, um, Lord God, heard the study tonight. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless them that, God, you would give them holy wisdom and understanding, and that, God, you would help every wife, every mother, every single mother, Lord God, every, Lord God, divorced mother. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless them, and that, God, you would give them understanding of your word. I pray, God, that they would measure up to the greatness of what you have called them to be, that, Father, that they would be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, 
and that, Father, that they would not be afraid of, of submission, that they would not fear humbling themselves. God, I pray in Jesus' name that they would, from the heart, take a hold of the mantle of wife if they are married, and that, Father, that they would um, no longer complain about their situation, but that, Father, that they would prayerfully consider what your word has to say and to seek your face for how and what they should do. So no matter, Lord God, if they're married to a king, they know how to handle a king. Or if they're married to a fool, they'll know how to handle a fool and keep their house together. Lord God, for you said a wise woman builds her house. It doesn't matter what kind of house she has. A wise woman can build her house. But a foolish woman tears it down with her own, her own hands. And so God help her in the name of Jesus. Give her the strength that she needs, the wisdom that she needs, the knowledge that she needs, the understanding that she needs, but most of all, the power that she needs. God, I pray that you would cause them to repent, those who need to repent. Cause them to ask for forgiveness from their husbands, those who need to ask forgiveness. I pray, God, that in Jesus' name, that from this day forward, they would be strong, godly, powerful, anointed, Lord God, blessed, favored, Lord God, and highly prosperous in the name of Jesus. Bless them right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. I love you real good in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. Make sure you share this video. For those friends of yours who are not on Facebook, uh, let them know that I will be posting this video on YouTube forward slash smiling solution um, tonight. It'll be up there tonight. Thank God for all of you who are watching. And what, before you guys leave, let me know where you're watching from. Because we have folks from Pakistan watching, folks from South Africa watching, folks from Australia watching, folks from Europe watching. Thank God for each and every one of you. So what state are you uh, watching from or what country are you watching from? Let me know. God bless you. I love you real good. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, God bless you, Mercy. God bless you, Melinda. God bless you, Angela. Good night, uh, Kanapan, I believe. Princess T, God bless you. Um, Rebecca, Mississippi, God bless you. Brenda from Florida, God bless you. Uh, Allega, God bless you. Charlene, yes, good night, the 4-1 Vision and 4-1 Global Family. Zamona from New Jersey, Calvin from South Carolina, Loretta from New Jersey, amen, amen. Jacqueline, God bless you. Mercy from Dubai, God bless you. Hallelujah. Houston, Texas, Teresa, Regina, God bless you from Jersey City. Dawn from Jersey City. Trisha, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Kenopan. Ken, Ken no pen, I believe. I believe. God bless you. You're going to teach me. You got to teach me. Ty. Hallelujah. God bless you, Janice, from Staten Island, New York. Rhonda. God bless you from visiting Florida. God bless you. Sonia from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. God bless you. Melinda from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hope from Seville. Florida, Jacqueline, Jersey City, New Jersey. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Let me know where you guys are, are dialing from or watching from. Rhonda, God bless you. Good night. Amen. Trisha from Philadelphia. Philly in the house. Dawn, God bless you. Same to you, my sister. You're welcome, Rebecca. God bless you. Nicole, thank you. I will. God bless you as well. Sonia, God bless you. Edna from Matawan, God bless you. New Jersey. Reverend Wiley.
Amen. Just post where you're from, those of you who are still on. Amen. Matthew, God bless you. I received that, my brother. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Interested in knowing where you guys are dialing from, where you guys are watching from. Amen. For those of you who are still on. Manny from Orlando. Reverend Nicole from Marlboro, New Jersey. Yes. Manny, I'm looking forward to coming down there soon. I want to fish. <laughs> Tanisha from Jersey City, New Jersey. Eric and Denise. Amen. Thank you, Manny. I received that, my brother. Thank you, Eric. I received that. God bless you all. Oh yes, Princess T, point three. Um, point three was um, making sure that you measure up, measure up um, by God's standards, by God's standards. And so make sure you're pleasing in God's sight. Um, so not measured by your parents or your family or your father, or your mother or your boyfriend or girlfriend, but by God's standards. And that number four was um, recognizing that you must have the mind of a wife. The mind of a wife, which is a mind of submission. A mind of submission. Uh, when you're a woman, you're trying to be the best you can be. When you become a wife, you realize that God has designed you for your husband. So it becomes the mark of submission. And that's when you can... Uh, for women that are developing, one of the things that you could develop, develop your humility, develop your submission, develop all those things. Amen. Christine, God bless you. Rhonda, bless you, bless you, bless you. Yes, that's number three, Sonia. Yes, measure up by God's standards, not by others. And number four, is uh, taking on the mind and spirit of a wife, which is the mark of humility and submission. You know, that's something that you got to be willing to give up. You got to give up your rights because as a wife, you become um, a helper for your husband. So you have to give up your rights as an individual and now become um, mindful of your wifely duties to be a helper to your husband. Amen. God bless you, Princess T. Amen. For those of you who are still on, let me know where you're dialing from, where you're watching from. God bless you. Um, I usually wait until the numbers get down a little bit, and then I sign off for tonight. And so class is over until tomorrow night at 9 p.m. And so just let me know where you're watching from. I'm interested in, so I can pray for you all and pray for your region. Pray for where you're watching from. Uh, we need to saturate this world with prayer. And I, and I love to pray specifically for individuals and their cities and states and countries. Amen. And so God bless you all. So we have people from Dubai, from uh, South Africa. We have people from all over the place. And so, you know, we want to um, extend our prayers to each of these regions. And so God bless you all. So let me know where you're dialing from. Yes, yes, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you. Charlene, uh, oh no, Christine Hudson from Brooklyn. Yes, God bless you. That's where I was born and raised in East New York, Brooklyn. Darlene Lopez, Los Angeles, California. Wow, that is beautiful. Thank you. I'm sure. Are you guys having good weather out there right now? Oh, God bless you. Um, Cheryl from Denver, Colorado. Oh, yes, skiing. I love it. And I love being in the outdoors.
Yes, God bless everyone. God bless America and all nations around the world. Yes, Sonia, I agree with that. You know, in our country now, we, we have those that will say America first. I say God first. God first. And everything else second. Where are you um, watching from him? You want me to pray for your visa? Where are you watching from? Cheryl Manor from East New York. Oh, really? You're from East New York, Brooklyn. God bless you. God bless you. Hometown folk. <laughs> Amen. Luis from Newark, New Jersey. My next door neighbor. Bless you, my brother. Bless you. And thank you. I received that as well. God bless you. Yes, Dawn, God first. Amen. All right, everyone. So I'm going to end this time for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening. <laughs> Tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. I love you real good in the name of our Lord. Have a blessed and marvelous evening in Jesus' name.